Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through Guillain-Barre syndrome. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash Guillain-Barre or in the neurology section of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. So let's jump straight in. Guillain-Barre syndrome is an acute paralytic polyneuropathy and it affects the peripheral nervous system. And it causes an acute, meaning quite quick, onset, symmetrical, affecting both sides equally, ascending weakness. So it's weakness that is coming up from the feet upwards. It can also affect the sensory nerves, causing a sensory neuropathy. It's usually triggered by an infection and is particularly associated with gastroenteritis caused by Campylobacter jejuni or infection with cytomegalovirus or Epstein-Barr virus. So what's the pathophysiology? Guillain-Barre is thought to occur due to a process called molecular mimicry and this is where the B cells of the immune system create antibodies against the antigens on the pathogen that's causing the preceding infection. So if they've got a Campylobacter gastroenteritis, the B cells of the immune system create antibodies against that Campylobacter. And these antibodies also match proteins on the nerve cells. They may target proteins on the myelin sheath of the motor nerve or on the nerve axon itself. And this damage to the nerve cells because of these antibodies against the nerve cells create the neuropathy and the symptoms. So how does Guillain-Barre syndrome present? Well it presents with a symmetrical ascending weakness which starts from the feet and moves up the body. There will be reduced reflexes because it's a peripheral neuropathy. There may be peripheral loss of sensation or neuropathic pain and it may progress to the cranial nerves and cause a facial nerve weakness as well. So what's the clinical course? Well symptoms usually start within four weeks of the preceding infection. So they may in your exams have had a gastroenteritis four weeks previously. The symptoms typically start in the feet and progress upwards and the symptoms peak within two to four weeks and then there's a slow recovery period that can last months to years. How do you make a diagnosis? Well a diagnosis of Guillain-Barre syndrome is made clinically. There's no specific test that confirms the definitive diagnosis. There's some criteria called the Brighton criteria that can be used for a diagnosis and it can be supported by investigations such as nerve conduction studies which show reduced signal throughout the nerves and lumbar puncture to test for the CSF and in your exams the CSF of somebody with Guillain-Barre may have raised protein with a normal cell count and normal glucose. Let's talk about the management of Guillain-Barre. It involves IV immunoglobulins, plasma exchange to try and remove some of those antibodies, supportive care to make sure the patient is still well despite having the associated weakness, and importantly they need venous thromboembolism prophylaxis. So maybe low molecular weight heparin or anoxaparin to prevent them from developing blood clots because pulmonary embolism is a leading cause of death in Guillain-Barre syndrome. In very severe cases where there's respiratory failure, then the patients may need intubation, ventilation and admission to the intensive care unit. Finally, let's go through the prognosis. These are rough numbers, but around 80% of people will fully recover. 15% will be left with some sort of neurological disability, maybe some slight weakness or some neuropathic pain, and 5% of patients will actually die from the condition. Thank you for watching this video. 
If you liked the video, left a comment or subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, it really helps. Zero to Finals is not just a YouTube channel. There's also a website with detailed notes, illustrations and questions, an Instagram account where new questions are posted every day to help you test your knowledge, books, flashcards and much more. I also have a personal channel where I share my thoughts and tips on learning medicine and you can find links to everything in the description of this video. See you next time.